Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Talk about uh, another mode of asexual reproduction that is vegetative propagation which is more common in plants and that is why the name vegetative propagation. Vegetative is related to the term vegetable so that is related to plants. Propagation to propagate means to uh, I mean to have more and more plants so that is why that is in one way it is talking about the reproduction of plants. So it is a mode of asexual reproduction in plants. It is the simplest mode of reproduction in plants. So that is why most of the simple plants, even the higher plants have both sexual and asexual mode of reproduction. So in this uh, vegetative propagation, the new plant which is formed is exactly genetically identical to the parent plant because that is the feature of asexual reproduction. So what happens in this uh, type of uh, reproduction is that plant parts detached from the parent and then they form a new plant. For example, you would have seen it in your houses also, like in your gardens and all the gardeners. What do they do? Sometimes they take out the stem of some plant and then grow it in a separate pot and that gives rise to a plant. Now this is not true for all the plants. For some of the plants, their stems are capable of giving rise to the entire plant. For some other plants, Plants, you take a small branch of the plant and then you put it and it can give rise to the entire plant. So basically just one part of the plant, uh, you take that, you detach that particular part of the plant from the parent and then grow it and it will be able to give you an entire new plant. Now, there are two types of vegetative propagation, natural and artificial. So, natural is something which happens naturally in nature. So, you do not forcefully do this. So, in natural vegetative propagation can happen by roots, stem, as well as leaves. So, that means there are some plants where roots are capable of asexual reproduction. That is, if you, if you take a root of, take some portion of the root and plant it somewhere else, the roots will give rise to a new plant. Or if you, there are some other plants where the stems are capable of undergoing vegetative propagation. So you can just take the stem and the leaves are also capable of showing uh, natural vegetative propagation. But looking at these properties of root stem and leaves, now gardeners and farmers what they have started doing, they have started utilizing this facility to artificially propagate. So that is artificial vegetative propagation, that is forcefully making the plant to reproduce more and more. That means forcefully trying to grow more and more plants. For example, if somebody wants uh, too many rose plants in their, uh, in their garden, so what do they do? One way is to leave it naturally. Now if you leave it naturally, naturally it will take its own sweet time. But if you want to have 100 rose plants, just uh, uh, within a very short period of time, what do you do? You start cutting stems and start putting it all around and then all of them give rise to new plants. So that is, you are like uh, making the plant to undergo asexual reproduction forcefully. You are actually intentionally artificially cutting down the stem and planting it. So that is artificial vegetative propagation. So there you have different techniques to do that. That is cutting, layering and grafting. So these are the common techniques for artificial vegetative propagation. So we will very quickly look at the different ways of natural and artificial vegetative propagation. So let us start with the natural vegetative propagation by roots. So first let us understand how roots help in vegetative propagation of plants. Now, so let us see how vegetative propagation occurs by roots. Now, birds develop in thick fleshy roots which later when put into soil develop into new plants. Now, the roots by its nature, they are thick and fleshy as well as tuberous due to the storage of food materials. Now, when birds develop in such roots, so these bud bearing roots, when put into the soil, new plants are formed because buds, what are buds? They can actually give rise to new plants. Right? Now, the roots being fleshy, they have all the storage of food materials. So, it provides all the materials, all the food that is needed for the plant to develop into a big tree. So, the swollen roots can be, that can be used for sowing the next season as well. 
So some of the examples where roots are used for vegetative propagation are guava, sweet potato and dahlia. So these are some of the roots which are tuberous and that is how they can develop uh, buds. So this is how they give rise to a new plant. So if you see here, so underground you have the roots and then gradually they give rise to new plant. By stems. Now there are many modifications of the stem which helps in vegetative propagation. So one such modification is called runner. What is runner? These are stems that grow horizontally above the ground. So now normally you would have seen that stems grow vertically upwards but there are some stems which grow horizontally almost parallel to the ground however they are above the ground so it is seen in plants like grass and strawberry so if you look at them you will see this is how the stems grow so if you see here so these are the flowers which they have but the stems you see it grows like this so almost horizontally above the ground so the birds are formed at the nodes so where are the nodes these are the nodes so at nodes what happens is the roots develop below the soil so if you see this light green colored structure they represent the nodes and above the stems develop so at each bud a new plant arises so if you see here is one plant here is another plant another plant and so on so the new plant arises at the nodes Now very similar sto uh, stems in strawberry are given a different name called stolone. They are called stolone. So if you see here, this is how the strawberry plant look like. So if you see, this is also almost parallel to the uh, ground but it is a little different in shape. So this is often termed as stolone which is present in strawberry. The next modification of stem is the underground stems. Now there are certain stems, normally the stems are above the ground but there are some specialized stems which grow below, which develop below the ground and these stems can also give rise to new plants. So how, what are the examples of underground stem? The best example will be a potato. So what happens or a onion for that matter. So what happens in case of these underground stems? So let us look at each of these structures one by one. So first let us talk about the potato. So you would have all seen a potato, I am very sure. Now on the potato you would have seen these small structures, the small dotted structures like this. These structures are nothing but they are called birds. So these structures are birds which are often called the eyes of potato. So these birds are those areas where aerial shoots arise in favorable conditions. So if you see here, shoots arise when the conditions are favorable and that is how the potato tuber and the name which is given to the underground stem of potato that is tuber. It is called a tuber of potato because this is fleshy underground storage structure for potato and it is like an enlarged part of the stem. So this acts as, this, it is like uh, a modification of the stem or you can say the swollen part of the stem which acts as the storage structure. So that's about potato. Now let us talk about the onion. What happens in case of onion? In onion the structure which we have that is called bulb. This is known as the bulb of onion and it is a short underground vertical shoot with thickened leaves. So if you see the leaves, it's like arranged in walls, leaves one after another. So here the leaves which you see here, these are known as the scale leaf. Here you have the axillary bud, somewhere here you have the axillary bud. This is a disc-like structure which is also known as disc, it forms the base of the onion. The structure of onion and garlic is little similar and this entire structure is referred to as bulb. So what happens here is the roots emerge from the underside of the stem. So if you see here, the roots are emerging from the below side of the stem. So this is the stem and the below side of the stem, the roots develop. So a modified stem forms the base of the bulb. So this is also, I mean, this is like a modified stem. 
and then there are short thickened uh, underground vertical shoot which have thickened leaves so this is how this is how the modified stem of the onion looks like and it is capable of giving rise to a new plant from here the roots will develop and then from here it will develop the the entire bigger stem next is vegetative propagation by leaves this sounds quite interesting because not many of you would imagine leaves giving rise to a new plant but yes they do so how let us see there are specialized leaves where birds are formed along the leaf margins which later give rise to a new plant so one such example is the bryophyllum now this is not very common i mean you can you do not see many plants where leaves uh, can actually give rise to a new plant but bryophyllum is one such example where you can see that along the leaf margin so this is the margin of the leaf right the boundary of the leaf so along the leaf margin you see the birds give rise to uh, they are capable of giving rise to a new plant altogether so if you take the uh, leaf so this is also known as the miracle leaf plant because it doesn't happen very um, commonly it is something which is rare so that is why it is miracle leaf so if you take a leaf of this plant and you put it in the soil so what will happen birds will arise and finally a new plant will be formed which is very unlikely of other plants so the birds are formed at specific uh, places on the leaf margin which are called leaf notches so when these birds fall in the soil new plants will arise thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again